Good morning. My name is Reverend Craig Nearing, and I would like to welcome you to the chapel service of the Institute of Lutheran Theology. I am the pastor of Zion and Peace Lutheran Parishes in Caroline and Split Rock, Wisconsin, and we welcome you on, during this Advent season. Today our sermon is based upon the text from the third Sunday of Advent, held this past Sunday, and we'll be looking at verse, uh, chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and John chapter 1. We read from St. Paul. He says to the Thessalonians in chapter 5, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. The word of the Lord. And our second text comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1. John writes, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. And this is the testimony of John, that when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they said to him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. Who do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. So they asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who you do not know, even he who comes after me the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Now these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us recite the words of our faith with the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. It is traditional for this third week of Advent to be a bit more joyful in theme than has the two previous weeks have been. In fact, the traditional Latin name for this day is Gaudete which means to rejoice, picking up from not only Paul there in 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always, but also in Philippians. And there's actually a traditional hymn that was written for this day, which goes, and I ask you to forgive my Latin, I never studied it. But it goes as such, Gaudete, Gaudete, Christus et Natus, Ex Maria Virgine, Gaudete. Or rejoice, rejoice, Christ is risen, of the Virgin Mary, rejoice. Now, of course, some of you might be saying to yourself, it's about time we start rejoicing. That we have been spending the previous two weeks here in the church during the weeks of Advent, preaching about, singing about, reading about repentance. 
And we have heard this call of John the Baptist, even as we heard it again today, to confess, to mourn over your sins. And it has, it has become, for some of you perhaps, one, rather depressing, always having to worry about and think about your sins. And, and then some of you might be more worried about that you're not getting that special Christmas feeling because we haven't talked about Christmas yet. That you might be saying to yourself that you are getting tired of singing Advent hymns, I don't know why. That it's time to start talking and singing and, and thinking about Christmas and all the joy that it brings. And while I've been preaching my share of repentance as well, I, I think starting with this week, actually have to agree with you. But it is high time. We start thinking and hearing and singing about the glory, excitement, and beauty of all which we are preparing to celebrate ourselves now in just nine days. That Advent isn't supposed to be simply a time of believing that Jesus hasn't been born yet because Christmas has taken place. The manger is not empty. And we do this during Lent even. That we know the outcome of Good Friday. We know that Easter Sunday is just around the corner. And so even as we spend times on sin and repentance, we always remember to talk about the resurrection. And so we should be, as we should throughout the whole year of the Christian church, always be celebrating not simply the birth, but also the life and the death and the resurrection of Christ. That it's right and proper, even in the middle of our Advent worship, to think about just what the end means. However, now, it's not that we are to forget Advent for the sake of Christmas. It is still Advent for a couple of more Sundays. That we still must sing these wonderful hymns, such as, O come, O come, Emmanuel, or Savior of the nations, come. That we should hear these words that we heard from John today about the Baptist coming and calling for a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That Advent is here because it does help us prepare ourselves. It does get us in the right frame of mind. And in fact, there is something more to Advent than just getting ready for Christmas. And just as Christmas is something more than just the celebration of the remembrance of Christ Jesus in the lowly cattle stall. But what all of this is about is really asking us and getting us to think about just what does this all mean? Why is the reason John was sent beforehand preaching as he did. Why did he, was he not worthy to untie the strap of Christ's sandals as he confesses today? And thus, we are right to remember as we prepare to know that with the coming of Christ, it is something more than just a little about, about a little babe. But with the coming here, we are really talking about the very Son of God coming and taking on our flesh. That the world in Christ has now has the very God of all gods walking on our soil. That now with the coming of Jesus, the words of Isaiah 61 are fulfilled. That the prisoners are released, the sight, are, the blind are given their sight, the brokenhearted have are bound up, and the mourn are comforted. That we learn that Christ was given to save this world from its bondage to sin, death, and the power and the devil, to deliver this world from the bondage that they inflict upon us in the way that they destroy, the way they give pain, the way they inflict suffering and sorrowing upon our lives. 
And this is why precisely we do spend, and it is good to spend these four weeks in remembrance and pondering our reality. That we hear this call from John to repent, to mourn over our sins, pre precisely because we know of what sin does to us and to our world. That we do need to hear. That all there is left for us to do is to repent because this is the only way for us to be reconciled from God. That we, we need to be reminded to know that just how far we are separated from God because of sin. Because once we know how far we are, we understand what it means to have God with us, Emmanuel. And so as we hear this call, it does remind us that the point of the Incarnation was so that God could enter into the darkness of death because of and for our own sake, so that we might be redeemed from them. And as we know of this, then this Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, comes into better focus that we are to rejoice always, as Paul said to the Thessalonians. That we are to repent out of our joy and thanksgiving because now we understand the grandness of our God. That it is to know that God has done great things for us in the fact that he entered our world so to die for it. And now wraps us up in his righteousness and robes of salvation as we live in repentant faith by despairing ourselves in order to glory in the grace and mercy of the Savior who died and rose so to redeem us back to himself. That as we know the reason for the birth of Christ, which Advent does for us, We are to repent of our sins and then rejoice. Rejoice at what it means that he has come. Therefore, as we know why we have sorrow over our sins, then we can actually begin to shout for joy, clinging in faith to this mercy given to us in Christ Jesus that we can rejoice even in the midst of repentance because we know that it was for you and your sin that Christ was given. And we understand why. The why of his coming. So to be found in the wood of the cradle and on the wood of the cross, gaining a victory over the death so that you might be forgiven and saved. And so we should begin the second half of Advent. Not simply moving from repentance to joy or Advent to Christmas, but celebrating the outcome of what the season of reflection is getting us ready for. To remember that at the giving of Christ at Christmas, we have been given the salvation from hell, death, and the devil that we are to rejoice even in our Advent because it calls us to remember the very reason that we have been gathered into the very Christian church. A place gathered for a place now to hear and to sing and to know of the work of our God in saving us from the depths of hell and damnation in the birth, in the life, in the work of the one who died and was raised so that all who believe in him shall, as Paul says, sure be surely found blameless when our Lord Jesus returns at the end of all time. So join with me this day in repenting of our sins, all the while singing, God et te rejoice, because we know of why our God has come, and we know of what our God bestows upon us. Let us pray. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, give ear to our prayers and lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.